This may come to you as a bit of a surprise, but Tupac isn't the only great historical figure to have worn head wraps. As a matter of fact, someone who definitely had a greater and much more widespread influence on the world than Tupac did wore head wraps too. Emperor Menelik II, Ethiopia's greatest and most renowned monarch, is the aforementioned. Don't believe me. A quick Google search will give you all the confirmation you need. Emperor Menelik II championed Ethiopia's victory against the Italians in the very first Italo-Ethiopian War, the Battle of Adwa. On the 11th of October 2019, Emperor Menelik's 19th century palace was open to us, yes, all of us, for the first time in more than a century. I know what you're thinking and the answer is yes. It's open to you too. We have Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed to thank for this development. Want to know how this happened? Keep watching. We'll let you in on all the details. The Menelik Palace, also called the Imperial Palace or Great Gebi, is a palatial compound located at the very center of Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. It today contains the offices and residence of the Prime Minister of Ethiopia. The palace is seated on a central plateau overlooking hot spring plains. The palace was constructed while founding the magnificent city of Addis Ababa in 1887 by Emperor Menelik II and his influential wife Empress Taitu. It may interest you to know that they were both laid to rest in this very same palace, in the Tayika Negist Mausoleum, alongside Empress Yudi II, Menelik's daughter and eventual successor. Dumped the brainchild of Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed, the 40-acre palace is now called the Unity Park. In a statement from the Prime Minister's office, the Unity Park is said to be a symbol that represents Ethiopia's ability to come together for a common goal and cross the finish line by creating an exquisite lasting print of her collective worth. The project seemed to be a demonstration of Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed's government's effort to reconcile Ethiopia's past, which glorifies unity of the country, and the then politics of division along the ethnic line. Ethiopia is divided politically into nine semi-autonomous ethno-linguistic regions, which compete for power at the center. Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed is reported to have initiated the $170.7 million project for the renovation of the palace, and the United Arab Emirates provided financial support for it. Adaba Aalu, the Deputy Director General of the Ethiopian Heritage Conservation and Research Institute, who co-managed the construction of the park, explained that experts from Gujarat and Punjab participated in the restoration of the Banquet Hall, since architects from the two Indian states had participated in its original construction. The grand opening of the Unity Park was attended by leaders from member countries of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni, Kenyan President Uru Kenyatta, Sudanese Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok, South Sudanese President Salva Kiir, and Somalian President Mohamed Abdella, in addition to diplomatic officials, business people, and others. The Unity Park captures 19th and 20th century Ethiopia, along with Ethiopia's great emperors, including Emperor Hale Selassie, who is featured in a life-size waxwork. It also features the post-1991 political works of Tigray People's Liberation Front in the form of sculptures in the garden representing nine ethnic-based regional states. The palace grounds contain different churches. The most important is the Taika Negist or Resting Place of Kings. There's no way you could miss it, not with that large imperial crown perched at the top of the dome. Other churches within the grounds are the Seal Bet Kadane Meherit Church, also called the Church of Our Lady Covenant of Mercy, and the Deborah Mangus Street Gabriel Church. The Unity Park equally features a wide banquet hall made of wood and leather ropes, wooden and glass houses once inhabited by princes and princesses, and an imperial court and hall. One historic building of great consequence is the massive Giber Adarash, which was used by Emperor Menelik Ia to give his periodic great Jaber feasts in which he fed large numbers of his subjects. It was later used as a venue for large gatherings or special occasions. Emperor Hale Selassie used it as the venue for large state banquets, such as the one held for the African heads of state gathered to form the Organization of African Unity in 1963. 
The Gur Adarash was equally used for the state dinners in honor of the visits of the late British Queen Elizabeth Yu in 1965 and French President Charles de Gaulle. So if you get the chance to visit the Unity Park, and this building in particular, you may find yourself walking in the tracks of a queen. The Gur Adarash also holds a waxwork model of Manelik gracefully sitting on his original throne and surrounded with a red carpet wax model. Now we wouldn't be discussing a late emperor's palace without talking about his throne room, would we? The Zufin Adarash was used as the main throne hall for imperial audiences. I can almost see the emperor holding court, seated upon his large golden throne. Those must have been glorious days. Things took a much darker turn during the Red Terror, when the military junta regime of Colonel Mengistu Hale Miriam used its underground cellars, initially used as a cold area to keep liquor in barrels and kegs, as torture chambers and an ad hoc prison for prisoners and high-ranking officials of the previous regime. A photograph exhibition, including images of imperial time ministers executed by the military derg regime, is also featured in addition to written descriptions. There is also a three-minute video display of a testimonial made by two of the people who were tortured in the cellars. Next to the throne hall, the first car to enter Ethiopia thanks to the emperor is exhibited within a glass box. And then we have the Shango Hall. Built by the Derg at a cost of $18 million in the late 1900s, it was prefabricated in Finland and, at the time of its construction, was the largest prefabricated building in the world. Today the building is used as an occasional meeting place. Last but not least would be the Prime Minister's office. The building now housing the Prime Minister's office was built at the same time as the Shango Hall to house the offices of President Mengistu Hale Miriam. After his ouster, it became the Prime Minister's office and was renovated between 2018 and 2019. The park also includes a spacious green area, including a botanical garden, a zoo where primates and endemic black mane lions will roam among 300 individual animals of 46 species, to be watched from an artistic tunnel with grass portions for viewing. An earthly paradise, if you ask me. In essence, visitors get the chance to see the place where imperial time ministers were imprisoned and tortured and witness their tragic demise in picture exhibits. Not so savory, but intriguing and interesting nonetheless, and definitely something to look forward to. If there is ever an unfortunate scenario where a medical emergency occurs, there is a branch of Street Peter's specialized hospital inside the park where visitors can access free primary medical treatment. The amount of revenue the park is able to make largely depends on the satisfaction of its visitors. There is no question that an entire century's worth of history is there to be learned uncovered and even experienced. But to further improve the experience, cafeterias have been built at different places in the park and a store where they sell artifacts. However, the pricing of artifacts is said to be quite high at the park, so those of us who may not be able to afford them could do some eye shopping as it is not prohibited. Tickets to visit the park can be purchased online at https colon slash slash unitypark.net. Regular tickets for foreigners cost $20, while VIP options are $50. For Ethiopians or those with a resident ID, the prices are 200 Ethiopian beer for normal and 1,000 Ethiopian beer for VIP. Children under 12 years can visit the park for free. VIP tickets include a guide and the privilege to visit the Egg House. The Egg House is an octagon-shaped two-story building constructed during the early 1890s. The house got its name from the octagonal shape of its roof. It features Emperor Menelik Hu's bedroom and reception room, Etij Tedu's dwellings, former imperial prince's bedrooms, and a small banquet room, all of which are connected through passageways. Since the inauguration of the park, more than 590 000 tourists have visited, said Dr. Tanred Hale, director of Unity Park. He made this statement in an event that marked the park's two-year inauguration on Saturday, the 19th of November 2022. It is no surprise that the museum has recorded such success. Of these, 487 000, including 25 000 foreign tourists, have paid to visit the park despite its six-month-long closure due to the coronavirus pandemic.
We can only imagine how much more the number of visitors would have increased if there had not been a pandemic. The remaining more than 100 were allowed to visit the park, which has become a major tourist destination in the capital, for free. The park has played a major role in creating a positive image of the country since its inauguration. It has also created multiple job opportunities and created revenue for the Ethiopian economy. Its successful opening and impact has also paved a way for other major similar projects in other parts of Ethiopia. Building on the successes of the Unity Park, the Sheikha Riverside and Entoto Park projects, the government is now developing three major tourist sites in three regions. The sites are located in Gorgora in the Amhara Regional State, Wanchi in the Aromia Regional State, and Koisha in the Southern Nations, Nationalities, and Peoples Regional State. Despite Prime Minister Abe's intentions, Unity Park has been met with anger from some Ethiopians. Emperor Menelik Yu, though regarded as Ethiopia's founding father, was a controversial figure. His former palace, although spectacular in size, was once a secretive place of government where brutal campaigns were plotted and unspeakable acts conducted during his rule. Favor for him is still very much divided. The palace's new museum, for instance, gives no indication that Menelik Q, the great founder of Ethiopia, waged what some historians classify genocides as he conquered the lands he eventually called Abyssinia, which became modern Ethiopia. The Unity Park has also been widely criticized as Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed's vainglory project. Iskinder Mega, a journalist and former political prisoner, made some bold statements iterating that the fact that the renovations which were done without consulting the public was a big mistake. He claimed that since it is about preserving heritage, the people should have had a say in it as well. He criticized the fact that the decision was made centrally without any thought to seek the citizens' opinions. Some of such opinions have been expressed, and some were strongly against the building of the park. While A.B. has been hailed on the international stage for his apparent dedication to democratic reform, violent clashes in Ethiopia's countryside say quite a bit about what some Ethiopians think. Around 3 million people were forced from their homes in 2018, the most in any country in the world, and Ethiopia's economy remains dangerously weak, which has prompted tens of thousands to attempt perilous sea crossings towards Saudi Arabia and Europe in search of better lives. Although the palace was funded through private donations, some critics have questioned whether it is the best use of money in a country where the average person earns less than $2,000 a year and infrastructure is rudimentary in many places. In the words of Buruk Tarif, a PhD student, studying the politics of Ethiopia's infrastructure, Addis Ababa is a city that has constant electricity and water problems and doesn't have efficient public transportation. It is growing faster than Beijing or Jakarta. There are a lot of other things this city needs. If you would like to visit the park in the future, leave a comment telling us which tourist attraction you would like to see most. And if you have already done so, leave us a comment telling us what part of your visit was most interesting. One more thing, read and follow the rules and regulations of the park. The last thing you need during recreation is to get fined or worse arrested. Thanks for watching our video. See you next time.